it's been a weird year, right? Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, basically like the godfather of the grommets <laughs> <laughs> everybody kind of looks to you in, in that way what what started the grom movement and how has it progressed how many chapters do you have okay Tell me yeah a so bit about it. um basically back in like about 2016 coming to milson west being cadre there wasn't a lot of diversity of different groups of people on nato and we just decided to start doing a polish impression and the kind of the reason we did it was because we couldn't really see anyone else doing it that was, that was literally it. So overall, we've been doing it since 2016, so we've been doing it for four years now. We have two groups of dudes who are split amongst East and West Coast in America. We have guys in Europe, as well as a couple guys in South America, who are just kind of standalone dudes that we let kind of show up in America and run with us whenever they want to. Oh, and we've also been on Polish TV. <laughs> uh, the 30th anniversary of the actual uh, Polish Grom unit, they included us in a little section of their website and on their uh, video about the documentary and about all the reenactors and we were in there. Being MSW Cadre, um, they also represent me to the company that I work for, which is MSW. So they're under the understanding that I kind of have like a majority say in things that do happen, but it's mostly a member driven group. So everybody who becomes a full fledged member gets to have a say in what we do, what uniforms we show up with at what events. Generally we have a, what we call the Gromble. Um, it is a, a guide, if you will. It's kind of like our own little Bible, hence the name. And what it is, is it has everything from like uh, basic expectations of conduct, where you, what type of gear you should be like your, as a new member, your basic uh, like starting kits, um, things that are expected of you, how to actually become a member. Our membership is 100% or zero. So if people quit events or leave early or uh, generally disregard the, the welfare of their friends, they're immediately expelled from the group. My name's Reese. I am a local to Seattle and we have a small group here of grommets. The the boonie is made by a company called Helicon. They're kind of a commercial, they're pretty widely available on different online retailers, you know, eBay, different sport of goods websites from Europe. Most of our stuff has to come from Europe because that's obviously where they, they are making a lot of it. So this one is pretty easy to get. And then the sniper veils, everyone's are a little bit different, but yeah, it's just like a camo bug net you can find. Yeah, typically on eBay or on Amazon or something, and then you just you cut it up to make it fit the, the brim of the hat so that it kind of sits up and it scrunches up on it so that it doesn't fly around at all. And then that's really, it's pretty a basic setup, I think. Like, but this hat was like maybe like 20 bucks and then the netting is like three bucks. The harness kit is made by a company called Miwo. They're a Polish-based company. The harness itself, it's a outer, or rather like an inner kind of hard belt, and then it has the outer piece that kind of connects. It's like a smirch, almost like a Russian smirch, a little bit different. And then the whole thing is molly, so it's, it's all modular for pouch setups and stuff. So again, all of the pouches that we use on these are from Miwo as well, and so you can just go on their website and order all of it through them directly which is pretty nice that's yeah. not that's not the same for a lot of our other kit a lot of our like direct action stuff or whatever we're using like you have to have certain connections and resources in order to get that stuff but for this kit in particular it's pretty easy to source you know we have like documentation that we make to you know basically put the kit list together and go okay if you're going to do a rifleman setup you need this that in this pouch here's where you buy it and then you can build your cart and then order it we do a lot of group orders for stuff because shipping from poland can be expensive this is a tokyo marui recoil shock 416 depending on what different guys in the group are doing we have different setups with the the vfcs you know um, but the 416 a5 is like the standard gun that we're using 
Something to note when we're doing greenside kits, so uh, you know the field kit, we use a 14 and a half inch barrel extension for the direct action kits with the JPCs and the helmets and stuff. Grom actually uses a, a 10 and a half inch, so we'll take this extension off. It just unscrews so that I can remove it and oh, then wow. put the flash hider on the bottom just to make it look a little bit better. So we'll run it this way for accessories and stuff. This is a GMP D-Ball A2 that, I mean, I've had it for a couple years. I'm looking to buy a real one because I feel like replica D-Balls in general can be hit hit or miss on quality and, you know, if they like decide to work or like last night I was trying to use my like low power laser on it and it kept flickering so I had to use the high power, which is kind of annoying. So little things like that kind of bother me, but like I'm, I'm willing to make the jump to a real one because I know it'll be solid and it'll last me forever. This is a Surefire M952V. So this is real and it's got white light and then it has a, uh, a different head that I can just flip over to go infrared if I want to use infrared light for night vision and stuff like that. The sling, this is a, uh, a Viking tactical padded sling. So it's adjustable. Um, you can kind of run it in and out. And then it's got the padding on the back. This is like the nicest sling I've ever used. I was a Magpul sling guy for a long time. And then I found this one really through the group uh, when we figured out that that's what the real unit was using. So I ended up buying one and yeah, it's it's phenomenal. I, I switch it around between this and, and my real AR a lot. And I kind of want to buy a couple more just because uh, it's super comfortable, easy to adjust and you can just you know pull it out and then get it back. EOTech XPS. This is a replica because I don't want to put a real EOTech on my airsoft gun. Yeah. Again, I thought about it, but like I just don't see a benefit of doing it really. And then this is just a, a Magpul MOE front grip that I've had it for years. And spray painted it and threw it on the gun and yeah. So it's a comfortable setup for me. I haven't changed much on it for a while now, but it's set up the way that I want it and it, and it works great. So I don't have any complaints with it. First place they should start is if they're on Facebook, we have a general interest group. I think it's MSW Gromit's general interest page. That's really the best place to start and that's where all of our documentation that we've created that explains what this stuff is about and where you can find it is, it's all housed in there. We have a document that we've built over the last couple of years called the Gromble. It's like the Grom Bible, right? So it talks everything about like the group, what we're about, where we're all based, and then various other things. But it has like in detail the full kit lists based on if you're doing the direct action kit so like the JPC and all the pouches for that um, or if you're doing the green side kit you know what pouches you would need if you're a rifleman or a machine gunner or what have you so we took a lot of time to do it right and lay it out as like simply as possible so that's the best place to start because it gives you the most answers to the questions you probably have without having to ask once. Yeah. And it's all linked in that group. A lot of people want to buy like everything at once and then just be done with it, but that's just not how it works. Like you have to take time because there will be little pieces of kit that you can't find right away. It might take you a couple months or like a year to find. So, you know, that's it's just a matter of pacing yourself and making sure that obviously you want to get the right stuff, but there's no it's no race. Like you know, everyone has different limitations financially or, or otherwise and you know, there's other priorities that people have. So, um, it's just a matter of being patient with it and kind of figuring out what works for you, but also what works for the kit based on kind of what we're seeing in pictures. You gotta be able to put real life ahead of yeah. yourself life sometimes. <laughs> yeah, everything that we're kind of making decisions on based on what's going on the gun comes from reference photos that we've, you know, accumulated over the years and the grumble that i talked about earlier has links to all of our reference albums so you could roll into one of those photo albums and probably find a gun that a guy's using that looks almost like this because that's kind of what we're going after if people want to become a member of the group they have to basically let us all know they have to come they have to have previous mills and west games under their belts so we don't have to worry about making sure they know how to pack a ruck or anything silly like that and then um once they do a couple events with us like we have a few probies right now but essentially once they have enough events under their belt and we feel like they're generally nice people we let them in we're not so much about being a super killer bb gun team as much as we are more so about being like a family so we can make people good at BB Wars later, but it's more about like, you know, being friends with everybody. So like, that's why you don't see any of us arguing with each other or screaming or anything like that. So. Yeah. You talked about the, the code of conduct. That's something that I appreciate as a player because I think that your rules of conduct really help the game. 
So could you just talk about what some of the basic rules of conduct yeah. are? Okay, so one of the main ones is obviously de-escalation. One thing that we never do is that if people start getting in arguments or fights, it is imperative that for our members they de-escalate themselves and remove themselves from situations. There's no reason to start fights with people and be mean, so it's just let it go. Rule number two is there's obviously no cheating allowed and there's also no claiming of other people cheating. Um, one of my biggest bugaboos is when people claim that other people are cheating uh -huh. when they have no factual basis. And to me, that's a super slippery slope where people are calling out other people's honor, which I'm not cool with. There's no claiming other people cheat either. <laughs> um, that's, that's, that's super, super non-starter. Um, obviously, no open disrespect to people in general. No open disrespect to fellow members. Everybody treats each other equally and with respect. There is no barriers to entry regarding anything. So anybody who's of any type of human can show up, we don't care. As long as you're willing to ride or die with the group, follow the basic rules, buy the right stuff, and can stick it out and not be a, a wuss, we're cool with it. Be it's pretty chill. Be chill dude and we'll yeah. be chill. <laughs> be, 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 be chill and we'll be chill. That's probably the best descriptor. I am in the pipeline for uh, the Air Force right now to be a pilot. Oh. I'm literally just waiting to leave for uh, officer school. <laughs> So I get to play MSW now uh, while I wait. And I mean, the group, like Gromits in general, we have a lot of National Guard, Reserves, active duty guys, um, and then some, you know, prior mill. And I kind of want to say that, like, the environment of Gromits helped me, like, kind of figure out that that was something that I wanted to get into um, just from, yeah, being around the atmosphere for, you know, a couple of years now. And, you know, that helped I would say spark it again but obviously a lot of it was just me doing some self-reflection and realizing that I wasn't happy what I was doing and I wanted to give it a shot to you know see what I could actually do with myself so yeah. I guess that's kind of where it's at and I said this a couple times to the other guys but so when I was in college I was in a fraternity and you know there's the whole like brotherhood aspect and blah 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 and like this group you know yeah we're a bunch of airsoft nerds and we do bb gun stuff but that was like it's the closest thing to that that i felt since i was in, in college and so it's just it's a very unique like environment to be in and a, and a unique kind of setup to be a part of because i think all of that tied together kind of helped me uh put my mind straight and figure out what i actually wanted to do so here we are Prior service, we have me and Gavin, our prior service, he was a Marine. Currently in, right now we have our friend Steve who is in RASP, trying to get into Ranger Battalion. We have our friend Evan who is currently at sea. On, he's, he's working on a, on, a, on a nuclear powered ship, which is pretty cool. Reese is getting ready to join the Air Force. We have Keegan who's in the guard for, he's in civil affairs. I'm sure I'm like right now flubbing on a bunch of other people, but essentially like the thing is, is that there's a lot of guys who are coming and or going from the military. A lot of them are younger than me. I'm a, I'm a little older than some of them. There's some old dude, dudes older than me for sure, but like, you know, there's some younger dudes and I think that like, you know, seeing some older veterans, like they kind of rubbed off and so they're all doing their stuff. So I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, totally. Okay. If I yeah. if if I hadn't joined Gromits, I probably would have quit Airsoft like probably two years ago. <laughs> you know, like I just the the local scene and whatever, and then being a rando in a in an MSW squad, like it's not bad thing to do, but it can only get you so far. Like being part of a group like this, like there's so much more you know resources, and then being able to play with all these other guys and being able to come together, like it gives you more, I guess, to do um, yeah. versus just kind of being a a casual MSW player, if that makes sense. Yeah, and you it's know. easier to work as a cohesive unit and like yeah. do things together where mm -hmm. you can feel like you're victorious. Yeah, and so you all know each other. Yeah, and we have, like I said, we have a couple of guys in Washington, and we play locally together all the time, so we're really tight knit. So then when we would go to a national event, and you know there there could be 25, 30 of us at the event, you know I know that I can count on these dudes i know exactly what they're going to do because we play together so much and then we're kind of just meshing in you know the other groups the pittsburgh guys play together a lot and there's a few east coast guys um you know or like southeast guys that play together so just taking everybody's skill sets with each other to mesh them into a platoon size element to be able to go out and wreck dudes in, at night or whatever um it's it's unique right uh, just because you're not going to get that in a in a standard msw experience and then having anthony as our 
cadre as our BB dad is like his freaking awesome. Yeah, he's know. a good BB dad. Fraternity is a good word for it. Mm -hmm. I kind of think of it more as like a, a chosen family group because like, you know, fraternities have a negative connotation with them and they're typically aggressive towards their rivals. With us, it's more so about finding people that we like, people that we can group up with, people that we can agree with. And we don't have to agree with everything like politically or whatever, but it's just the people that we place in at least equality or more important than our own. And if you have a group of friends that are like that, they'll all do that for you the same way you do that for them. And it, you know, it's something that I think that the social media generation kind of lacks. Like yeah. it's, a, it's kind of a big deal to make actual personal relationships right. with people. Cool. That's a good end note. All right. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it.